As the world turns to Paris for the 2024 Olympics, this beautiful coat of arms on a blue and red flag comes in full view. The colors come from the coat of arms itself, so let's take a look at the history and evolution of this central symbol that dates back to the 13th century. What does it have to do with St. Peter the Apostle, the Virgin Mary, shiny war medals and honors, as well as powerful medieval merchant groups selling wine on the River Seine? The coat of arms can be found in this 800-year-old book, and we can also see it on stamps, buildings, bridges, and gates. It can also be seen in the 1924 Paris Olympics logo, and it inspired the stylized logos of the city and its police. Let's quickly touch up on the ornaments around the actual coat of arms before we get into the main shield. It stopped with a walled crown as a nod to the ancient Parisian fortifications, similar to the arms of Lyon. On the sides, we have branches of oak and laurel. On the white scroll, we'll see the city's motto, a Latin phrase meaning tossed by the waves but does not sink, which is a reference to the boat. The motto is widely used and you'll see it graffitied on buildings or projected on the Eiffel Tower. It's basically an abbreviation of a longer verse saying, in vain you strive to submerge the ship of Peter, this vessel rocks, but it's never submerged. The vessel here being the Catholic Church led by St. Peter the Apostle. The saying is attributed to either Pope Gregory IX or Pope Innocent IV in context of the war against the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II in the 13th century. The three cool medals on the bottom are those of the National Order of the Legion of Honor, the Order of Liberation, and a military medal called the Cross of War. All three were awarded to the city of Paris, so they're also included on their coat of arms. Inside the shield we find the top part showing the awesome historical royal coat of arms of France of the golden fleur-de-lis on a blue field. I have a full video talking about this in detail, so check that one out. But basically, King Clovis I of the Franks used the lily on his baptism, invoking the protection of the Virgin Mary and the Holy Trinity, as well as asserting the dynasty's divine right to rule. Moving on to the main part of the shield, we see the ship, which was taken from the seal of the medieval Parisian water merchants. This was an influential community of merchants who obtained a royal charter in 1170 AD. This gave them a monopoly to navigate the Seine River and conduct business and trade, which made them wealthier and more powerful, and they continued for 500 years until King Louis XIV revoked the charter and abolished them. The coat of arms changed many times over the past few hundred years, especially the top section with the fleur-de-lis. For example, Napoleon's first empire replaced the fleur-de-lis with the three bees that were found in the tomb of King Clovis I, as well as adding a white star on top of the ship. Another example of this is the Republican era's coat of arms for Paris, which showed yellow stars instead of the bees and the royal fleur-de-lis. The oak and laurel branch supporters also saw their fair share of change over the years featuring two lilies one time and these two men in another. I like this one a lot because of the cool medieval crusader knight on the side. So from lilies to stars to bees and back to the lilies, Paris and its ship changed over time, but it's always cool and exciting to learn about. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Council of Knowledge.